Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling, with Platinum versus AEW Dark. This is episode 103. Holy moly, have I done a lot of these? <laughs> and it took place on um, August 17th. 2021 um an hour and a half show um 12 matches and let's just jump into it so we've got 2.0 the once ever rise and obviously they're here to stay at least for the nonce and they're taking on skylar andrews who i believe is making his uh, aew debut and sam adams um, the unfortunately named uh, wrestler who's also making his debut. They do a pretty good job. I got to say, I admire uh, 2.0 a lot here. I think 2.0 um, really showed that they could not just go through a match that they memorized the spots, but honestly, um, this match had a little bit of a spontaneous feel about it. I really liked it. It is a foregone conclusion match, so let's do our three-check system for those kind of matches. Um, did 2.0 look good? I think they looked very good. I think they did a great job. Perhaps they've worked with Skylar Andrews and Sam Adams, changed that fucking name. Um, maybe they've worked with them before, perhaps not, but it certainly appeared as if they had because 2.0 did a fantastic job, so they will get that second check mark, and then Skylar Andrews, Andrews and Sam Adams looked good and in fact were given a quite a bit of offense and they actually did some complicated stuff instead of just simplistic stuff as you would expect. Three check marks. Moving on. Um, Tay Conti against Rebecca Scott. I don't know why they're calling her Tainara now. It's eh. um, this is a relatively short match for uh, Tay Conti. Um, Rebecca Scott, I believe, is making her debut um, and looks all right here. Um, at the end, the DDT, uh, the Hammerlock DDT, Tay Conti wins. The match is perfectly serviceable. Three check marks. Then we got Big Shot Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson um, against Joey Keys and Spencer Slade. This is what you expect. This one's a little choppier, a little uglier. Lee Johnson certainly does his part. Brock Johnson is getting comfortable, but incredibly simple. Anytime they try to do something that was a tad more complicated, um, it definitely looked very mechanical and rehearsed. Um, so I'm going to give it first check mark, sure. Second check mark, not so much. Uh, third check mark, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and give him that. But we're not going to have a three check mark night all night long. Matt Hardy in the next match. This is the fourth match against Wheeler, Utah. I'm going to call this competitive since Wheeler, Utah, though he has lost more matches than he's won. Um, he's with the best friends now, so we'll go ahead and call this competitive. Um, Hardy definitely had his working shoes on, wanted to show that he could do a longer match and didn't want to squash Wheeler, Utah. Um, really, really good stuff here. Um, one check mark for competitive matches because they both look good. Another check mark, um, because uh, Hardy won in a definitive fashion, that boot, um, and then a third check mark, uh, because with something advanced, yes, this idea of the Hardy family office against um, Orange Cassidy and the gang will continue, especially because Cassidy dropped Hardy at the end with the orange punch. Three check marks, nicely done. Penelope Ford, Penelope against Masha Slamovich, another new person to AEW. Holy moly, AEW Dark. They're, it is full steam ahead. People are like, oh, you know, they got to start bringing in less people. That is not the case. They are definitely giving more and more people more and more of a try. Um, AEW Dark Elevation was a very long show, and so was this one. And there's a ton of new people, and it, I got to say, it is cool to see. Penelope Ford looks good, really good here, uh, better than she's looked um, You know, just lately, it seems like it's going better and better and better for Penelope Ford. Um, she's also winning with the Muda Lock, which is a great thing that she's doing now. Um, and after the match, Ford goes into a ground and pound attack. Thunder Rosa storms to the ring to make the save. Really cool. Uh, three check marks for the squash match. Um, and then this thing between Thunder Rosa and Penelope Ford. I think it's a great first thing for Thunder Rosa to really get into in this time. And it's great for Penelope Ford, too, frankly. Six match Chris Statlander 
who's been on a roll against Kiara Hogan. I'm glad to see Kiara Hogan really getting these top flight matches since she's been back. Um, yes, it's a squash match, uh, more or less, but Kiara Hogan, um, those strikes looked fantastic. Uh, Kiara Hogan, I would say, was the performer on um, Elevation against Hikaru Shida, and I would say she did it again here against Chris Statlander. Three check marks, really good stuff, really good stuff. Seventh match, uh, Pac and the Lucha Brothers. Boy, that's a formidable, scary six-person team against uh, Luther, Serpentico, and Cole Carter in a six-man tag match. I am not going to call this competitive in spite of the presence of a uh, chaos project because um, clearly Cole Carter's there to get his butt whipped. Um, Pentagon connects with that package pile driver, picks up the uh, thing uh, as Phoenix wipes out the chaos project with a plancha. Um, three check marks. Everybody looked good here. Great job by... Um, as always, Serpentico does a really good job keeping the flow going um, and that kind of thing. I really liked it. Next, eighth match, Nyla Rose against Tina San Antonio, who's again another person making their debut in AEW. This, though, was a uh, boy. Rose with that spear and that feel throw, a running hip attack, shoulder tackle, and then the beast bomb. That was the match. I just described every spot for you. Three check marks. Great job from San Antonio taking that butt whipping. And Nyla Rose really fired up, really working that crowd. Being able to do these dark matches and dark elevation matches in front of a, a genuinely large crowd really has everybody picking up their game, and it's great. Um you know, as much great as Kara Hogan did, Ricky Shane Page did a great job. That bump over the uh, top turnbuckle where he landed hard on the floor, the, the kind of Harley Race-esque bump that he took was ridiculous. Ricky Shane Page, Andrew Palace, and Bill Collier taking on uh, Dark Order. It was so, most certainly a squash match. Ricky Shane Page continues to impress, in my opinion. Um, the Dark Order, by the way, John Silver, uh, number 10, Preston Vance, and Alex Reynolds. As usual, when you wrestle the Dark Order, there's some complicated stuff that goes on, but everything went off without a hitch. Um, and Vance really putting over that full Nelson lock, so we'll give that uh, three check marks nicely done. Tenth match, almost there. Frankie Kazarian against Brandon Cutler. Um, this is cool. This is Frankie Kazarian really confronting one of the members, at least loosely, of um, the Elite. So it's pretty great. Nakazawa was there to help... Um, Brandon Cutler quite a bit. We'll call this a competitive match. Um, did they both look good? Absolutely. Um, Frankie Kazarian shines in any match, but especially matches like this, where there's things are a little more complicated or he's expected to really carry the yeoman's task and the lion's share of the load. Certainly up to the task here. Brandon Cutler, though, is no slouch. So I think they had a pretty good match here with a pretty good story. So that's a check mark for Frankie, uh, or for both of them. Another one for Frankie for winning with that uh, crossface chicken wing, and then a third check mark because obviously this thing between the elite and Frankie Kazarian is not dying down anytime soon. And then doo -doo -doo -doo, our eleventh match, um, second to last, Jurassic Express. Um, in this case, the incarnation of Jungle Boy and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, be, 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 be. It's, this was really the Jungle Boy show. Let me make that clear. Um, Jungle Boy was really all over the place in this one and Pillman. They were the two that really carried the uh, heavy load for that four person team. And they're taking on all of the wingmen, Ryan Nemeth. Caesar Bononi, J.D. Drake, Peter Avalon, and of course it's going to be a little chaotic when you have that many people, um, but I think emphasizing Jungle Boy and Brian Pillman Jr. was a great way to do it. I'm going to call this a competitive match because the wingmen tend to get a little something. At the end, Jungle Boy makes Nemeth tap out, makes Nemeth, which is a bit of a shock, tap out to the um, snare trap. Luchasaurus gets in on the act, of course, and so does Pillman, um, and they both, I mean, and Garrison, and they both play to their strengths, but this really was about uh, Pillman Jr. and uh, Jungle Boy. Um, did both sides look good? Yes. Um, did the winning team do so definitively? Absolutely. Was something continued? Yeah, I think we might see different incarnations of um, 
And, and, you know, a possible tease of the future of the Jurassic Express against the Varsity Blondes. I'm just guessing that. And then finally, in our 12th match, Dante Martin, fresh off of his stellar performance, stellar performance on the last Dynamite, against Lee Moriarty is there, another person making their debut, and I think it's really cool. This is a squash match, of course. We know it's a foregone conclusion, but definitely they treat it as a main event, and Lee Moriarty gets in a ton of offense. Um, But at the end of the day, I did love that Dante won with a sunset flip. I thought that was really great. And all the weird little pinning combinations that Lee Moriarty was going into. I thought it was really sweet. And he looked really good in the process. Three check marks. And we are out of here. Loved it. Great show.